everyone, welcome back to my workshop. Uh, if you've been uh, following me for a little while, you probably know that I love to work with CNC controlled machines, whether it's CNC routers or CNC lasers. Uh, I've been playing with them for well over 10 years. Uh, I'm by no means an expert on them, but I do like to share my experience and, and what knowledge I've gained over the period with people. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about the machines in the past. Um, and uh, today we're going to dive in a new one that hopefully is a little more attainable for some people. Um, what we're looking at is, uh, is a new laser from MakeBlock. It's their X-Tool D1. Uh, they come in two different varieties. There's a five watt and a 10 watt. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at the 10 watt version. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, I, I'm not gonna go through the whole build process. Uh, they've got a very well-documented uh, video on how to build the machine, but I wanna give you some of my tips on the assembly um, my impressions of the machine as far as uh, likes, dislikes, and then we're gonna just dive in, we're gonna do some work with it, we're gonna engrave some things, we're gonna cut some things as, as to how I would use it, and uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of uh, what the machine can do, a little bit on how to use it, uh, and then just my general thoughts on it. Uh, if that sounds good to you, stay tuned and let's get to it. Okay, so we're not going to go through the whole build process, but I did want to point out that this is a well-constructed frame. It's an aluminum alloy frame with uh, steel rails and wheels, uh, so it's very strong, very well machined. Uh, you do want to, as you're putting it together though, uh, use a square, make sure everything's aligned before you lock it down in place, uh, and that'll make the rest of the machine work much better. All right, the next tip is you want to make sure your belt tension is proper. Uh, they have uh, two steps here. You've got the side screw that locks the block in place that's holding onto the belt. And then you've got the adjustment screw on back that if you uh, tighten or loosen it, that will slide that block back and forth, adding or removing tension from the belt. Uh, you want to check the belts to make sure that they're tensioned properly, that they're not too tight, that they're causing binding, but that they uh, are not too loose that they would be skipping teeth. So. Um, Check that carefully, try to get your uh, two side belts uh, equal and then lock them all in place. And the next thing to take some time with, uh, make sure the cable management runs well. On the laser head module, you wanna make sure that you get, provide plenty of loop at top here so that it doesn't strain the uh, cables when there. You want those wires to have a lot of strain relief. Make sure they get in that little clip there in that loop. Uh, and then on the side, uh, this wire just kind of hangs out to the side, which is a little annoying. Um, you want to try to make sure that it's biased so that the loop wants to push it outside the frame rather than inside. Otherwise, it may inadvertently slide into your cutting area. All right, now before we just jump in and start cutting and engraving material, we do need to make sure we're protecting the surface we're cutting on. Uh, this is not a device you want to just set out on the dining room table and go to town. I mean, you could, but you're going to run the risk of something getting messed up and the laser actually, you know, ruining your tabletop. So uh, bare minimum, you know, you want to put some sort of sacrificial material down that if it, if it burns into that, it's no big deal. But I like to take it a step further and make sure we're really truly protecting uh, the material, giving the laser a really smooth flat surface to sit on and, and run across. And also I like to make sure that there's always a ventilation layer uh, underneath the cutting uh, or, or even the engraving area. I just, it allows any smoke or a beam to cut through fully if needed, uh, but not immediately just get trapped in between layers, which then can cause some staining that uh, can uh, create some extra work or almost ruin uh, the piece you're working on. So what I've got is I've got a quarter inch layer of MDF on the bottom, cut to about two feet square, which is roughly the footprint of the laser. And then I've got a piece of 26 gauge sheet metal, uh, which uh, will protect any uh, errant beams from, um, you know, ruining the surface. It'll just kind of absorb that. And then on top, uh, I found uh, a, it's a uh, fireplace screen mesh. Uh, it normally hangs in front of a fireplace to help prevent ash and embers from uh, moving into the room. Uh, it's, it's machine wound at roughly about a quarter inch spiral. And when you stretch it out and spread it out, it's a very nice flat surface that also allows air to move through it. So when cutting through objects, um, this should really work well to give a clean image on the back or a clean cut and clean edge on the back side rather than getting that staining and marking. So Okay, before we can uh, actually start working with the laser, we need to be able to make some files that it can interpret. So uh, MakeTool does provide some free software. Now let's just jump to their website, take a look at that. Uh, if you go to support.xtool.com, they've got a uh, 
software download section. And you want to make sure you're looking for the Xtool D1. Uh, you're looking for Laserbox and Basic. They do have a Windows and a Macintosh version of it. They list the system requirements. It doesn't take a really big computer to run. Uh, and then they will show the versioning. So they do update this software, which is a good thing. Uh, it helps resolve some issues and uh, maybe add some features to the, both the software and the, the laser over time. So it's good to be checking on that. Uh, not always required to update it right away unless there's a serious issue, um, but something to keep an eye on. So um, you want to download that, you want to install it, and then it will let us jump right in. Uh, when it opens up, it should first try to connect to your uh, laser. I've already got mine connected. In fact, we're connected via Wi-Fi right now. Uh, and so we can just jump in and start working with this. So uh, I'm not going to go real in-depth on it right here. Uh, just be aware that Laserbox, ba Laserbox and Basic uh, is, uh, as its name implied, a basic software to get you started. Um, it's, it's meant to be uh, uh, easy for the newcomer to laser engraving. So you do have features such as importing uh, items. So if we wanted to import a graphic, we could do that. We could open this up and just bring in the Xtool logo. Uh, and then once you have this in here, you have your options to work with it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, um, if it's the wrong size, uh, you want to look at a couple things. First off, you're going to want to make sure that it is in locked ratio. If you have it unlocked, you can actually just squish the top down, and we don't want that. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure that that's locked. Uh, and then it's nice to because you can size it to the si size of your material. So um, unfortunately, right now, the software only works in metric units. Uh, they have told me that they are working on an update for later this year that should include imperial units as well. So for those of us in the U.S. that uh, uh, have grown accustomed to working in inches, um, you'll, you'll want to make sure you've got some conversion tools from um, imperial to metric um, and maybe get yourself a, a tape measure that has both, uh, both units on it because that will help you uh, quickly visualize the difference. So, so in this case, if we wanted to resize this down, to say 125 millimeters, we can do that. And the aspect ratio locks them, keeps them together. Um, from there, we can select our material. They have some nice defaults to help you get started on uh, what you're working with. Uh, if it's something else, you, you'll want to do a little trial and error. Uh, and so get yourself some scrap material um, and just do, do some test jobs before you dive into using your expensive uh, one-of-a-kind type thing. So uh, once we have that all set up, uh, we can adjust the types of uh, engraving. There's a few different uh, modes that you can use. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into all that. There's some information out on the forums and the groups on what these processes do, uh, but they will change the way the image is, uh, you know, its contrast, its pixelization and such, and which will help the image look better based on what you're going for. Um, once that's all done, uh, we go ahead and hit start. Now, if we're connected via Wi-Fi as I am, um, It'll allow you to make some adjustments here. You can use the framing. Um, it'll show, it'll, it'll control the laser to move the box around where it's going to engrave. Uh, and then when hits, when, once I hit start, what it's gonna do is actually send that job to the laser, but you need to physically walk to it and hit the button to start it. If you're connected via USB, you can do all the same functions, framing, adjust the laser head. Uh, and then once you hit start, it's going to start up the job right away. Uh, the nice thing here, it does give you a rough estimate of the time. In my experience, that's been pretty close to what it is. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you're setting this up to go. Uh, this, you'll see there's also the cylinder working. Uh, I'm not going over the cylinder option right now. We'll do that in a later video. Um, but that's how you would adjust from the whole gantry moving to it controlling the rollers for uh, rotating the cylinder. So. Um, that's kind of the basics of this software. Again, I'm going to do a couple more videos showing how I set up a couple jobs to help people that are uh, getting used to the laser. So stay tuned for those. But for now, let's jump back out into the shop and let's start lasering. All right, before we start the job, we need to make sure that the laser is focused to the material. Uh, so there's a nice little lever on the right side. You just need to flip that down, loosen the screws so that you can lower the head down just so that lever touches the surface of the material. Uh, lock the screw back down and then flip the lever back up. Then you're ready to go. Right here you see the framing function. It's just telling the laser to outline the area that's going to be engraved. Uh, we see that it's just a little off center, so I'm just going to move it a bit to the right, run that framing again. And then when it looks good, we're ready to start the job.
All right, so we just cut that out, and um, I don't know if you can tell from the video, I'm trying to get some angles of it. There is a fair amount of smoke that comes out, especially when cutting. And so just trying to reiterate that point that you want to use it in a ventilated area. Right now, you, you might be able to hear I've got the ventilation fan running uh, to clear it out of the shop, but um, there's, a, there's a little bit of lingering smoke in here. So you, know, you want to protect yourself, protect your lungs, um, and, and make sure you're using a setup that allows you to uh, uh, ventilate and extract that smoke away from you and others. All right, it's time to take a look at the piece. So it's always great when you pick it up and the parts fall right out. It means the cut went through cleanly. Uh, looking at the edge and the back, there's not a lot of extra overburn. So it looks like our settings were great. All right, this next test, I wanted to see how fine of a detail the machine could get. So we're using a vector drawing that's a three view of a Corsair from World War II. Uh, and so it's going through and actually etching each individual line on there instead of uh, doing a scan uh, of a uh, raster artwork. And so we'll take a look at this, see how it looked in just a minute. Once again, it pops out cleanly and uh, taking a look at that, that is some very fine detail on this very small placard. So very impressed with the uh, 0.080 millimeter spot focusing on this laser. All right, another thing people often ask about lasers is can it engrave metal? Well, it can't actually engrave metal, but as you can see here, it can mark off the anodization off of aluminum. And then if you also had a uh, coated stainless steel or a painted metal, it could remove the paint from there. Uh, didn't quite get the alignment right, but it looks great otherwise. All right, uh, another feature of this uh, laser is it does now support the popular Lightburn software. So that's an aftermarket software you can add for more features. And we'll go into that more in another uh, video later. Um, but what we're doing is uh, we're actually cutting out a 3D puzzle. This is a little house ornament type thing. Uh, this is a file that's provided for free by a group called Cart On Us. I'll leave the link down below if uh, you want to try it out yourself. But uh, it's just uh, showing the ability of this laser to cut some fine detail and some fine tolerances uh, and also it's a file I was able that's available free on the internet um, that you can get started with this laser so let's go ahead and just watch this thing finish cutting it out and uh, we'll see how it fits together all right the job is done and it is a telltale pull the parts out and it drops out uh, all the windows are cleanly popping out in place um, and you can see on the back side there, uh, not a lot of extra scorching. Um, just needing to tap those parts out so everything was cleanly cut. Uh, now let's see if we can get this assembled. As you can see, the parts are fitting. They are, are very snug, which is good. Um, in uh, some software like Labor, you can actually set a kerf offset, and that's where you would measure the amount of material removed by your laser um, and then program that into your files to give that offset so you have a more exacting fit. All right, for my model airplane loving friends, uh, here we're cutting out some eighth inch balsa wood ribs. Um, this is a, just a sample file I drew up in CAD to kind of test how it would handle um, interlocking parts of both balsa and plywood. So that was the balsa. Here's the three millimeter Baltic birch. We're cutting through this again. And uh, right after this, we'll see how the fit parts fit together. All right, here we're assembling all the parts, the plywood spar, uh, the ribs going in the middle, and then the, the kind of a bit of a tab lock system here uh, to get them aligned. They are just a little bit loose, um, so that's where I would uh, like to use the curve. But as you can see, uh, very clean edges, just a little bit of caramelization, not a lot of overburn. Uh, perfect application for being able to cut out some model airplane parts. Well, I've had fun uh, playing around with this laser for the past couple of weeks, getting to know it. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, what I can do with this. It's detailed engraving with that 0 0.080 millimeter spot. Uh, really, it'll bring some uh, options to the table as far as uh, smaller detailed items. I love that it's portable. You know, uh, this is something that I'll be able to move to an item. Uh, if I want to add an engraving to a piece of furniture that's bigger than what I can fit my laser, I now have an option to customize it with this one. Uh, it's very solid design. It's one thing that impressed me right off the bat is uh, it's, it's really refined. Uh, solid aluminum alloy frame. It's got those steel rails, those steel wheels. Uh, I expect this uh, machine to, to operate really well uh, as long as you take care of it. And uh, some of the added bonuses, I mean, having Wi-Fi uh, connectivity to it is great. Um, having the uh, software updates and whatnot is, is a good thing to see from the company. Um, 
I do hope they do come through with uh, adding Imperial units to the LaserBox basic software. Uh, while I do use Lightburn primarily, uh, I, I know for new users that can be overwhelming. Um, and having that extra conversion step for people that are used to Imperial units is, is just another little uh, stepping stone to uh, make this machine a little more difficult, but by, by no means does it prevent you from getting things done. Uh, and then cable management. Uh, I, I'm really going to be keeping an eye on the cable management, um, trying to see if we can do something with this side cable uh, to keep it out of the way, keep it safe. Um, but really, uh, overall, this is it goes together really easily. Uh, so far, it's been a solid machine. Uh, very few misses that I would, would mark on it. Uh, we're going to be doing some future videos on this. I, I, I wanted to keep this video as more of a basic overview, kind of a just to get started, uh, my first impressions. Um, but we didn't really touch on, uh, there is the rotary device option um, for engraving cylindrical objects. Uh, it does come with some risers uh, to help elevate the machine to use this. Now they have four of them, so I wasn't able to rise it up high enough to, to engrave anything with this one, but I'm gonna be working on either uh, getting the additional risers or uh, even just making my own to uh, bring the machine to a place where I can use that rotary. And we'll definitely cover more of that in the future. Uh, we didn't touch on anything with this can do with acrylic. It can engrave and cut certain acrylics natively. However, uh, anything that's very transparent, or translucent, or not very opaque and lighter colors, it's gonna struggle with just due to the nature of the dial-based lasers. There are some workarounds to be able to engrave on uh, glass and clear acrylic. So we're gonna play with that and hopefully bring out a, a video on that as well. And uh, uh, I also have on order, Xtool has a specific honeycomb bed as a base for this as well as an air assist module that will help uh, just improve the quality of the cuts, uh, both on top and bottom. And uh, we will go over those as those come in. I'm also gonna be building a custom enclosure for this. I do wanna be able to run this inside. Uh, it's up here in Minnesota, it gets really cold. I do uh, heat my shop to some degree, but it's still, it's, it leaves it a little bit chilly. And then I gotta suck all the warm air out of here. So I'm gonna be building a custom enclosure for this uh, that will allow me to use it in my basement and vent it out uh, of a four inch vent fan. And so we'll be covering that as well. Uh, and then I wanna to touch on a little bit more about using the various software, both Light, LaserBox Basic and Lightburn, uh, just to give people a few more tips and tricks on how to get started with this laser. So there will be links below if you are interested in, in this laser. I will have a link to Xtool store where you can check out all the details about it. It is an affiliate link. I hope you don't mind those uh, by using that. Uh, it does help this channel out uh, just a little bit. And uh, I'll also leave a link to the Facebook user group. There's a great user group on the Xtool D1 uh, where you can get some help, get some more questions answered, get inspiration, and just share what you're doing with it. Uh, it's a great uh, group of people that are very helpful. And then of course, I'll leave the link to that card on us file for that little uh, laser cut house uh, in case you wanna play around with that yourself. I hope this was informative for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with me to the end if you're still here. Uh, I appreciate it if I've earned your subscription that you can click that down below and uh, leave me a comment. Uh, what did you like? What would you like to see? Uh, questions about this laser or anything about my workshop? Go ahead and leave a comment. I do review those. I try to get back to them as quickly as I can. Uh, once again, thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you next time.